Welcome to a lesson that will show how to determine the intervals for which a function is increasing or decreasing and how to determine the relative extrema by analyzing the graph of the function. This video will not use calculus techniques. A function is increasing on an open interval if for any x sub one and x sub two in the interval, if x sub two is greater than x sub one, then f of x sub two is greater than f of x sub one. So if x sub two is to the right of x sub one, f of x sub two is going to be above f of x sub one. So the graph would move up from left to right as we see here on this interval. And a function is decreasing on an open interval if for any x sub one and x sub two in the interval, if x sub two is greater than x sub one, f of x sub two would be less than f of x sub one. So if x sub two is to the right of x sub one, f of x sub two would be below f of x sub one. So moving from left to right, the graph would move downward as we see here. And relative extrema occur where a function changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So the function will have a relative minimum pictured here at x equals c if the function changes from decreasing to increasing. And the function will have a relative maximum pictured here at x equals c if the function changes from increasing to decreasing at x equals c. So we have a relative minimum at a low point on the graph and we have a relative maximum at a high point on the graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Here we want to use the graphing calculator to determine the relative extrema and then determine the open intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. The first thing we should recognize here is that we have a polynomial function, or more specifically, a quadratic function. And therefore, the domain for this function would be all real numbers. So let's go ahead and sketch a number line that would show the domain of this function. So we would have from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Now let's go ahead and graph this on our graphing calculator. So we're going to press y equals, type in our function, Let's go ahead and press zoom six to make sure we have the standard window. By analyzing the graph, we should see that it decreases on this interval, then we have a low point and then the function starts to increase. So because we have a low point here, we have a relative minimum. Let's go ahead and find that first. So we're gonna press second trace, select the minimum option, it's asking us to be to the left side of, of the relative minimum, and we are, but let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. Let's press enter. It's gonna ask for the right bound. We'll move to the right side of the minimum point. Maybe somewhere in here, press enter. When it asks us to guess, let's go ahead and move the cursor closer to the actual minimum value, which is here. So the point one negative five represents the relative minimum. And then notice to the left of that point, the function is decreasing, and to the right, it is increasing. Let's go ahead and write this information down. The relative minimum occurs at the point one, negative five. Some texts like to identify the relative minimum as an ordered pair, but remember that the x coordinate is the location, and the y coordinate is actually the minimum value. So we could give the same information by saying that at x equals one, the relative minimum is y equals negative five. Now since we know that the function changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals one, we're gonna go ahead and use that point to help us determine the intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So at positive one, we'll make an open circle because the question asks for the open intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. So let's go back and look at the graph again. To the left of one, the function is decreasing, and to the right of positive one, the function is increasing. So it's decreasing on this interval and increasing on this interval. Let's go ahead and write that out. It's decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to positive one, and it's increasing on the interval from one to positive infinity. 
So if we graph the domain of the function, and then plot the locations of any relative extrema on the graph of the domain, it'll help us determine the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. Let's go and take a look at our second example. It's the same question, we want to determine the relative extrema and then the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. So we should recognize this as a polynomial function, or more specifically a cubic function, and the domain would be all real numbers. So we have to consider the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity when determining the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. Let's go ahead and graph the function and identify the relative extrema. Press y equals, clear this function out, and enter the new function. Press graph. We can see it's increasing, decreasing, and then increasing, and it changes at this high point tier and this low point tier. This high point tier represents a relative maximum, and this point tier represents a relative minimum. Let's go ahead and zoom into this area to get a closer look at the function in this region here. So we'll press zoom, option two. We're gonna move this blinking pixel closer to the area that we wanna zoom into. So I'm going to go to the right and then move up a little bit. And then from here, I'll press Enter. And now we have a much better view of the graph where it changes from increasing to decreasing and then back to increasing. Let's go ahead and find this point here that represents the relative maximum. So we'll press second, trace for the calculation menu, and then press option four for maximum. We need to be to the left side of this high point, so we'll press the left arrow until we're to the left side of the hill. Press enter, move to the right side of the high point of the hill. Press enter. When it says guess, we're gonna move the cursor closer to the actual maximum. Press enter. And this relative maximum is the point one, two. Let's go ahead and write that down. Now let's find the relative minimum. So we're going to press second trace again. Option three for minimum. Let's move closer to the low point, but remain on the left side. Somewhere in here. Press enter. Move to the right side of the minimum. Press enter. Move a little bit closer and then press enter again. And the relative minimum would be the point two, one. Remember this implies that at x equals one, the relative max is y equals two. And at x equals two, the relative min is y equals one. And these x values here are going to help us determine the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing. So let's go up to our number line and plot these values. So at x equals one, we have a relative max. At x equals two, we have a relative minimum. Now let's go back and take a look at our function one more time. Notice to the left of positive one, the function is increasing. So it's increasing, and then from one to two, it's decreasing, and then from two to infinity, it's increasing. So it was increasing on this interval, decreasing on this interval, and then increasing on this interval. Let's go ahead and record that. So it's increasing on the interval from negative infinity to positive one, and then from two to infinity, and then it's decreasing, and it's decreasing on the open interval from one to two. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here on this video. I hope you found this helpful.